Hi there, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store. Another week and uh, another series of ukuleles that you folks want to see and I want to show you. Today, uh, we're gonna take a look at some solid body ukuleles by Snail. Everyone knows Snail, they've been around for a while now. It doesn't seem like that long ago that they were the new kids on the block, but they're very, very established with several models that everyone else kind of wishes they made. And um, the solid body market has been one of those markets that kind of gains popularity and then disappears without a trace, seemingly over a very small period of time each time. But I do think that's changing. In recent years, you've had the Flight Pathfinder join the Risa Electrics for those that want a steel string. But for those of us that want to stick with the ukulele sound, you know, that nylon fluorocarbon plasticky string sound, then the options are limited if you want a stage instrument, something that doesn't have much acoustic resonance. For a couple of years, Imua made a model that was very popular that did this. Uh, Pete Howlett has dabbled with these with his own um, Firefly, and we even did a, uh, a range of these from Big Island, but they come and go. They're not always something in production, and um, hopefully that won't be the case with these, because I think we're all gonna agree these are pretty cool. Um, so what we have here is the Snail SEU-1T and the Snail SEU-2T. In fact, actually, these are the concerts, but they come in two sizes, concert and tenor. I'm holding the concerts because I felt like they'd fit in the camera shot a bit better, but we're gonna look at both today. Um, we'll start with the SEU-1C. So this is an acacia, and so it's an acacia top, so a kind of veneer acacia on the top with a mahogany slab body, so a solid piece of mahogany for the body. You notice on the back you've got a panel here that will help you access the volume and tone control on the front and you also have a battery hatch for a 9 volt battery. The body, uh, the body is mahogany, the neck is mahogany going up to a normal snail headstock there. Just waiting for it to focus. With the closed back snail tuners. A 35mm nut with an ebony fingerboard and bridge. There are some slight differences between this and other snails. This has a a slot bridge, so the kind of bridge where you just tie a little knot in the end of your string and then poke it in and pull it up tight. And we'll just take a quick look at the 2 series as well. So this will be the SEU 2C and the SEU 2T. These are a maple top, stained yellow, like a kind of Gibson TV yellow. Uh, those wondering what the TV yellow stands for, it's from the days before colour television. A lot of people had yellow guitars because they would come up a nice shade of grey on the television. So you'd have all these people playing bright guitars, but no one would really know about it in the flesh. So you have this maple top, which is really nice and figured. I'm a big fan of this, but I do think it's a, more of an acquired taste being bright yellow. And the rest of the specs still the same. You have the mahogany body, mahogany neck, ebony fingerboard and bridge, the slot bridge, and all of the other bits are in the same place. So what is the purpose of this? Well, first of all, uh, I would imagine that most people that will be playing this will be uh, performing. There's only really an amp sound. You know, if you try to, there's no volume acoustically when you try to strum it. But if you're playing on stage and you find that your current ukulele produces a lot of feedback, you want to be able to kind of get the most signal out of your instrument without creating issues for the sound engineer. This is what would make this perfect. Also, if you just want a really slim bodied instrument to hold to you when you play, I can understand why a lot of people would like these. If you plug into an interface and you record bits at home, but you want something that's just a little bit more, I don't know, kind of a little bit more honed in than an acoustic instrument, then I can totally get why you would go for something like this. One thing I will note is I really like the knobs on this model. They're tiny, tiny knobs. Uh, they're, um, they're small knobs that you can kind of feel quality on. The pots are good. They're not really slippery. I find with cheap instruments sometimes, and cheap being anything really under five, six hundred pounds with electronics, the knobs can be really quick to turn and not very accurate and it'd be very easy to knock them out of place with your hand. Not really the case with this at all. These are smaller so they're not going to get in the way and also they are tighter so as you turn them they don't they don't feel too loose. The one thing we need to talk about before we move on to a, a sound sample is how the sound sample will relate back to you because 
That's a really tough one. And that's the toughest thing I find about recording these electric ukuleles because I'm gonna plug it into an amplifier, a good amplifier, an AER Compact 60 that I've owned for 10 years. And it's, it's a fantastic amp. I gig with it all the time. It's got a tiny bit of onboard reverb, which I think is, I put a tiny bit of reverb in just to make the instrument sound the best it can. But these instruments really are limited by the amp you plug them into. If you plug them into something that's got a four and a half inch speaker, it's not gonna sound big and bold and, and it's gonna sound crisp and it's gonna sound quite tinny. And I think that these are as good as you make them in the post-production. So basically after that signal leaves the instrument, what you're plugging in them into is gonna be the thing that really makes them sing. Um, I'm going to do two sound samples for each one. So I'm going to play each one through the amplifier with an ambient mic and I'm going to play each one immediately after with a signal going straight into my mixing desk so that you can hear what you would get from both. Let's give the SEU1C, SEU1T, SE2, SEU2C and SEU2T a play and see what you think. So we're going to have the same settings for all of these. If you're interested, my amplifier settings, the volume is the pre-gain is at about 3 out of 10 and the volume is at about 4 out of 10. Just a bit quieter than I have it in a restaurant when I play a gig. I've taken a tiny bit of the EQ off the mids because it can sound a bit too um, woolly and it's not very clear through the microphone. And what I've done is the volume on the actual instrument itself is set to about 5 out of 10 and the tone is set to about 6 out of 10. If you were to go all the way up on each, you would find that this instrument is very, very brittle. There's not much depth to it. And that's because most ukulele pickups and preamps don't require a nine volt battery. That nine volt power is quite a bit more than your normal CR2032 cell battery. So bear that in mind if you're looking at plugging one of these in in the future. This is the SEU1C.
I'm going to wrap this one up super quick now because I'm going to try and film the video for El Luthia for those of you that voted for El Luthia on social media this week. But thank you so much for watching. I found that I preferred the Acacia concert and the Maple Tenor, but what did you think? Uh, let me know in the comments section. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you have any questions, you can contact me in store at alex at ukulele.co.uk or email me or phone me on 01024308820. I also have my own channel where I do videos in my own time. That's Ukes of Alex. Please do check that out. But have a great day, and uh, hopefully I'll see you again very soon. Same bat time, same bat channel. Thank you.